seeing that on the full screen now? Yep, got it. Thank you. And the usual disclaimer at the front, you know about this, so we'll skip that one. Yeah. And today we're going to talk why the asset register exists in the first place. Yeah. Um, it, well, I'm going to explain about it being a national layer. So although it's you're free to add data to it, you can't change its infrastructure. Uh, no. and then we'll go through it and then we'll give you uh, the opportunity to play with geolocation, if you wish to, which is sort of only arguably a part of the asset register, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and then the, we'll be done. Okay. So why do we have an asset register in the first place? Well, I've mentioned this to you before. I think that we should be getting all the data out of the filing cabinet off okay. spreadsheets where, and usually the asset register nowadays is a spreadsheet in someone's uh, computer but I think it should be online where everyone can get at it. Yeah. Uh, there is a major insurance requirement for an asset register, which I'll explain later. Uh, it's much easier to see and understand and update the assets if they're visible geographically, uh, which yeah. they would be in the map. Uh, there is an insurance requirement for an asset register. Yeah, BHIB have sponsored our uh, membership of Parish Online. Okay, so you've probably talked to them about the asset register. Yeah. Um, but and I'm not going to read through all these lists, but you will see that uh, there's quite an emphasis there on insurance. Yeah. Um, and the reason for that is that uh, when the time comes for them to either defend a claim made against you or to help you process a claim that you're making against them, yeah. um, good record keeping makes all the difference in the world. And, and in fact, that's why BHIB uh, will pay your subscription for you because they find that it's much easier to work on a claim. They save a lot of time if you've just got your asset register behind you. Yeah. Um, and as we see when we go through the asset register, it's a piece of cake to come up with the value of everything and everything that you want to get uh, insured so that when you're doing your sort of every three year check as to whether you've got the best deal and so forth that becomes very easy yeah um and then uh, i think we've discussed this in the past because of the ability to add any number of attachments to a record it becomes far easier to keep track of uh, inspection intervals dates and reports yeah. so that you can say we have an inspection interval of every year on our park benches and then you can show that uh, you take a picture of before and after each time someone goes and looks at a park bench, so that helps your case. Um, and then the the person doing the work, whether it's a contractor or your lengthsman or something like that, they do a, a report at the end which you store with the uh, the actual item. So each bench, for instance, if you've got a dozen park benches, each one has its own record and insurance um, yeah. sort of documents that will be able to. to bring out in a case of a claim mm -hmm. uh, probably bhib has explained to you that nowadays the fire department if they're called out to put out a fire in the village hall and there's nobody inside they'll just let it burn they won't risk their men nowadays in, in really? trying to save a building where there's no human life involved the village halls tend by and large to be on their own so if they burn down so what but that means that you must have a replacement value in the insurance table, um, which is because the halls uh, are unlikely to survive a fire. They're just going to be allowed to burn down and they've got to be completely replaced. So that's the value yeah. that they insist on. Um, and again, I have a funny story to tell about that. When I was talking to, uh, I don't know if you dealt with the lady called Michelle South, but Michelle was the lady I dealt with at BHIB, and she said, oh, she's, I said, I, I cannot understand where this figure of £600,000 for the, re, the the value of our British Hall comes from. I said, you know, I look around it and there's nothing to it. Why is it 600000 She said, well, I'll send you a piece of software, uh, which takes you through the steps and will come up with the value for you. You just run it on your desktop. I said, fine. She sent me the software. I ran it through the desktop. It said your replacement value, £600,000 is completely the wrong number. It should be 1.2 million. Yes. And I was horrified. But at least I knew then that we were uh, uh, ensuring the correct value. Mm. Um, so it's, it's, it's worth doing. All right. So 
In Parish Online, as you've seen already, we've got three main types of layers. There's all the third party layers, which are the, the majority of them. There's the parish layers that you create on your own. And then there's the asset register, which is slightly different in that it comes for you already built, just as if it was some third party there, but you can yeah. put data into it. But you, you aren't able to change the, the infrastructure uh, because this is a, a national facility. It's used by um, parish councils all over the country, and therefore they need to all have the same structure. So if you find there's something that the asset register doesn't provide you that you need, you need to create a, a complementary layer in your parish layers, and then when the time comes to display uh, that record, you need both layers up at once. Uh, but okay. I think you, you were with me when I explained yesterday that the system automatically brings in the right information at the right time. Uh, so would we, I know there is a layer called trees, but we wouldn't create uh, another layer for trees in the asset register. We just use the one that's already in there, build our own. Yes. Well, yes, but you asked yesterday, what happens if we want to store information for which there isn't a record in the asset register? Mm -hmm. um, so one of your questions was, I think, uh, or, or Stevens, was it about um, ivy and things getting around the trunk and so forth? Yes. And you'll find that most of the records have got a notes column, which is what I would use for that sort of thing, rather than create a completely new record in this the parish layer. I just use one of the notes fields for that sort of thing. Okay. But that's it. So the most frequently asked question, um, Phil, is can I import the data from my existing spreadsheet into Parish Online? And the most usual answer is no. Mm -hmm. And that sounds a bit uncooperative until you work out that most spreadsheets have no location data. At them. You'll just say that we have five park benches, but it doesn't tell you where the five park benches are. No. And Parish Online has to have a location. Yeah. So um, it's just not possible to import a spreadsheet that doesn't have the right sort of data in it. Uh, and getting the data into the right format is so much work um, that you might just as well put it in by hand. Yeah, now, some places have got very large asset registers, and that seems daunting. And uh, I make the point that there's absolutely no law that says you have to do it all in one go. Yeah. And there's no law that says that you've got to do it, you know, um, delegate the work to somebody else if you can mm -hmm. find someone. Um, so let's explain the asset register itself. Um, yes, it comes to you ready made. Um, the next statement is correct is incorrect and i've changed it on a later slide but missed this one but the the data columns are not the same throughout um but they are the ones that experience shows are the most needed so mm -hmm. you're not able to change them um but when it becomes clear that what they've got is insufficient so and the biggest example at the moment is street lights the street lights mm -hmm. don't have what type of light is it and what type of light pole is it? And we're beginning to find more and more uh, people and need to store that sort of information. Um, so I'm saying when you need to make a change to the asset register, uh, open up a ticket or uh, use the community forum, um, yeah. which we'll, we'll be discussing this afternoon. Okay. Uh, when you're inputting your asset data, um, the first step is to determine which layer of the asset register does it belong in. So, for instance, when you open up your asset register on the left-hand side here, you get all these collections of items. And then each one has a category associated, or uh, sorry, a whole bunch of categories. So I'm going to click on buildings here. Yeah. And you'll see that here is a brand new blank record. And the yeah. required value is category. And if you click on there, you will see that there is a whole bunch of options offered. Yeah. And this is a scrollable list. So you need to sort of scroll down and go all the way through the alphabet. And then the, the category changes for um, each type of item that you're selecting. So if you choose, for instance, uh, building contents rather than building, this is buildings. But if you go to building contents, then you get a completely different bunch. Yeah. And each category has a different layer of columns associated with it. So as we saw yesterday, if you go to trees, you know, it mentions all sorts of things about girth and canopy circumference yeah. and that sort of thing, which you won't find anywhere else. Okay. So 
Can I just ask a question? You know, I said I've played around with this before I came on the training. Yeah. I've, I've located every bus stop in the village. Right. Two of them are in bus shelters. So I've made a note of that on the layer that says bus stops. Right. Would you advise putting them into the buildings part as well? No. One place or the other, but not both. Yes. Okay. Well, um, if you, how many bus stops have you got? Seven, did you say? Um, no, I think we've got 16. 16, and two of them are in bus shelters. Yes. Well, the, the bus shelters you need to store as buildings because they need to be insured. They're insured yeah. for more money than a bus stop. Yeah. So, yes, you need to record them, but I would keep the others as bus stops, as points. Okay. Uh, yeah. But, yes. All right. So, if you now choose uh, a different layer, because you're going to show you how the categories change. So, we're going to change up here uh, just buildings to read buildings contents. Um, and there's a huge number of layers down here because it shows you every layer in Parish Online, not just the ones in the uh, asset register, which is a bit of a, a weirdy. So start yeah. typing and it'll uh, do um, sort of type ahead. It'll choose for you what meets. So typing your own choice in here is a good choice. Okay. So what we've done here is we've gone into building contents, clicked on category, and all these categories have now changed. So none of this has yeah. anything to do with buildings, but it's all got to do with building contents. And yeah. again, it's a scrollable list, so um, make sure you select the one you want. Now, the full list of categories and layers is really useful, and there's a very good video about uh, in the knowledge base on this. Yeah. So uh, well worth going there. And also what I suggest is, not many people realize automatically the knowledge base is entirely separate from uh, Parish Online. So although you get to it through Parish Online, you can also get to it just by clicking on a URL. Okay. Um, so I would suggest you store this URL I've got here for you as a bookmark, and then you can just jump to the knowledge base whenever you feel like it. You don't have to go through Parish Online. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next slide. Uh, when you're transferring your existing asset register into the one in Parish Online, uh, it really helps to have the layer and the category sorted out for each item before you start, which yeah. is why I say go and look at the knowledge base. You can get a printout of every category and every layer. And then in your spreadsheet, um, add the appropriate layer and category to each row because it makes it so much faster when you're entering the data. Yes. Um, and you, you can then sort your spreadsheet in layer order and then mm -hmm. category order. And it means you're not continually changing backwards and forwards. You start off, let's just say you've got five buildings. So you might as well do all five building layers at one go and then yeah. move to the building contents and then move to the trees or whatever it happens to be. Yeah. So it's just a way of, of helping yeah. speed up the process. Um, now, I'm going to go into Parish Online and just show you a couple of things uh, because they're easier when you see them. Okay. All right. So I'm now going to go into um, getting the uh, uni yeah. un unique property reference number because yeah. you, you've got to go and look for that. Um, and then I'm going to show you quick ways of, of selecting data. So. On my screen now, let's come out of where we are. When you say you've got to go and look for the UPRN, you have to go to um, land registry, presumably, for that. No, no, it's in the address space. So that, that's why I'm going to demonstrate it to you. Okay. So let me go into there. And let me go into there and go into Parish Online. And you can see me going into Parish Online on the screen. Yes, I can. Good. I notice your username has changed from the one that Parish Online, Online gave you. Yes. Um, when we get to this afternoon, yeah. we'll, I'll tell you exactly why that is. Okay. Uh, I'll wait for this afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> um, so in the asset register, yeah. If you look under buildings, one of the questions that they ask you if you're adding a new feature is put in the UPRN. And the yeah. question is, where do you get that from? Yeah. And the answer is 
from your uh, address space. So here we have our buildings. Each one of these is, or well, some of these are just plays for me to practice. Yeah. On. Uh, the simple answer is to say, let's turn that off for the moment. Go into your addresses layer over down here, the collection. Right. Click on the small arrow and select address plus points. All right, now every building in your parish now gets a dot assigned to it. And every mm. dot has the data record for that building. So if we just say, I'm gonna go for this building here. Yes. All right, it says, so which one do you want? So I want this one. And it gives you, this is the old vicarage, and it gives yes. you the universal, sorry, the unique yes. property reference number. Yeah. So you just cut a uh, copy and paste this out of there. Yes and go back to your asset register and pock it straight in. What's the LPI re uh, register, the one underneath it? There's another number underneath the UPRN. Let me go back to where I was. We'll go into, is it there? Addresses. Yeah. Let's go for that one. Oh, the LPI key. Yes. Um, I think that is the Inspire code for the land registry, but let's just check that. Let okay. me turn on the land registry and see what happens. Okay. Now, they don't show up until you zoom in a bit. So let's make that building there at the center of the screen. Let's start zooming in, zooming in, and zooming in. And no, it's and the answer is it's not a number that I recognize. It's okay. so the, this is the Inspire number from the land registry. Yeah. Um, it's a great question. I'll ask and find out for you by this afternoon, Phil, because okay. I have no idea what the LPI number is. <laughs> okay. But um, it's nice to know that you're the first person to ask a question, isn't it? <laughs> You make you make sure under all those other. Well, I mean, the power of this, the, the whole system is so incredible. It, it, I could yeah. spend twenty hours a day for ten weeks and still not find everything. <laughs> yes, in it. well, uh, correct. So I was going to show you other features in here. So if we go into the building contents, uh, and I go into one uh, bad choice, let's go into other feature. So I could add something here, but then if I wanted to add something into a different layer, I can start typing up here, uh, building content. So, well, I can't stones. There we go. So you just select it quickly. Then it asks you lots and lots of dates, the date purchase, the lease valuation, that sort of thing. Now, the chances are that the date purchase, when you come up, is going to be many years yeah. um, earlier than August 2022. Yeah. So the natural instinct is to start scrolling back, but that you're going through a month at a time, and you may need to go back 20 years or more. Yes. So the, the hint, hint for you here is click on the year. Yeah. And suddenly it changes. Now you can you can just go zooming back to the one you want. Yes. And when you get there, then you just choose the month and off you go. But it's much faster to yes. click on. In fact, I think if you click again, you get a, a drop down list. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really very fast. Uh, but and you're only going to put an estimate in anyway, aren't you? You know, it looks twenty years well, old. Well, no, maybe, maybe not. It depends. If it's something like your village hall, you probably do know when it was purchased. Yeah. Uh, but no, a lot of the stuff I agree will be a guesstimate. Yeah. Um, the other thing I was going to show you was, let me just go back to the screen and see what else I'm going to tell you. So we've got the UPRN, we've shown you the typing, we've shown you the fast date selection. Oh yes, screenshots and naming attachments. Absolutely right. Mm -hmm. So let's come back to uh, screenshots. Um, we need to go into an existing thing. So click off there, click on that one. And here is a record. So Descript description of location is uh, oh, historic England. Okay. 
Oh, yeah, sorry. Is this? I'm I'm looking at the wrong. I'm looking at an address space. Let's come out of there. That's not a fair choice. Um, come out of that one. Just zoom down here and turn off that one. And it's quick England. Why have we got that on? That's that's correct. Sorry, that was just a reference to yeah. uh, the, the pig. So this is, you know, we, we say we purchased it in um, the 1st of January, yeah. 1986. That's clearly a guesstimated desk uh, yeah. value. Um, what I wanted to show you was here in the attachments. You remember we were talking about attach an, uh, an inspection record every time you inspect, a maintenance record every time you maintain. Yeah. Well, you have to name these attachments when they go in. And the, the purpose here is to say, if you, you built up over time, lots and lots and lots of these attachments, the question is, how do you sort out the one you want? Yes. And the answer is, most of your stuff is going to be chronological. Yeah. And so put the first thing in the name of your attachment should be the date, but it be, for sorting purposes, it needs to be in the format year YYMM um, DDD. So year, month, date, format. Yeah. Just because that helps you sort things when you've got a list of 20 or 20 things to sort, it's easier to go by year first, then the day, the month, and then the uh, date, and you can find what you're looking for. And all those way. names, pump house hyphen near hyphen GSS JPEG, can they be altered at all? Or oh, yes. Yeah, they're, they're just ones that I made up. So okay. when, when, you, when you had to add an attachment... You're selecting something that's already on your computer. Yeah. We'll just say, change the name of it before you um, add it. Yeah. So, so you'd, still, you'd still put in uh, YYMMDD Pump House. Exactly. Yes. Precisely yeah. right. Uh, yeah, this is not the most brilliant example to showed you because I haven't done what I said I should. <laughs> I'm encouraging you to do. Uh, so that was that one, sorting the assets. And let me just well, make what's sure. The line there, asset value, is different yep. to the replacement value. Is the asset value the purchase price? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Because for insurance purposes, they, or rather for the audit purposes and the asset register for audit, they're not interested in replacement value. They're only interested in cost. Well, and, and then, of course, you, you may be having to take depreciation into account as well. Yeah. So on capital goods like computers and so forth like that, you're probably depreciating them over time. And so the asset value will change, okay. which leads me to the last hint on this page, uh, yeah. Phil, which is um, come back to here. Um, if you look down at. the last inspection date, the last valuation date, yeah. all right? It literally does just give you the last one, but for the purposes of uh, an insurance claim, you probably need to show that it was done on a regular basis. Yes. So what I suggest is when you fill these dates in for the current time, just take a screenshot yeah. and store that um, because that shows you what the dates were and show you've done it every six months or every year yeah. or whatever. It's just, again, a way of showing that you've done due diligence. Yeah. So when you fill these, these dates in, you've got a date there, then just take a screenshot because when you next change it, it you won't have a record of the previous date, but now you do. Yeah. Okay. Right. Let's go back to the presentation. Uh, and we've done all of the things we've done there. So we're moving on to table view yes so uh, i think we may have touched on this but it's a wonderful wonderful asset so if you click on any item in your asset register and then select table view uh, this is what you get you get a list of all of them in a yeah. sort of a spreadsheet format yeah and the beauty of this is that a you can export it in uh, a spreadsheet format yeah. B, if you want to make a, a change to several records at once, the only way to do it all in one go is here in table view. They yeah. say, let's suppose uh, if we can have an example. Uh, this is not a good example to give, but let, let's suppose that, yeah, let's suppose you looked up five uh, UPRNs and you want to put them all in into the appropriate building. 
Mm -hmm. uh, going in through parish online directly, you've got to go through each separate layer, call up the building, call up the record and put in the UPRN by clicking yeah. on the pencil and everything else like yeah. we did uh, yesterday. Here, you can just go in and put the answer in here. Scroll, uh, oh, sorry, bad choice. Um, scroll down to the next one and put in the next one and it all gets done for you um, in one simple go. So basically your table view is a way of doing multiple edits at one time. Yeah, okay. All right. And finally, there's the wonderful reports and data extract choice, which is in the menu heading tools, asset register, export. You'll see it um, this afternoon, yeah. but also we're gonna do it here. At the moment, although it gives you a choice of format, there is no choice. We're hoping yeah. to get CSV as a spreadsheet choice yeah. coming, but it hasn't happened yet. Um, when you select the layers that you want to display in your report, by default, it selects all of them. So if you want to deselect some of them, you go into this list and you just toggle them off. All right. Yeah. So when you go into here, it shows that they're all selected on. You can deselect the ones you want. So they would still exist, they just wouldn't be exported. Exactly. Yes, yeah. you're not doing any damage to anything. You no. just, uh, this is purely what's going to go into the report. Yeah. Similarly, by default, it does not include maps. But if you click on here, you get the map position of every single asset printed out as a map. All right. So it's clearly going to be a huge amount of work for the computer and the printer. Yeah. So you don't, it, by default, this is turned off but it can yeah. be fun to turn it on, particularly if you're trying to explain things to an insurance company. Yes. So you've got a map showing where things are, that does help them. Uh, and by the same token, if you don't want to, uh, by default, the report does not include anything that's got a, a zero number of people or things in it. Yeah. But if you want to include this, the zero rows just for um, guidance sake or whatever uh, you can do. But by and large, the, the defaults are sensibly chosen. You wouldn't normally include the maps and you wouldn't normally include zero rows. Yeah. When you click on generate report, there can be quite a long delay. Um, you yeah. do get one of those little circling arrows to tell you that things are happening. But bear in mind, it's all happening up in the, in the cloud. And yeah. so it then takes a while for it, A, to generate the report and then to download it to you. But once it has downloaded it, this sign uh, open comes up as a proper um, available. It's not grayed out. It's fully black and white. So mm -hmm. you click on it and you're going to get this, which is the PDF file of the report. And you can see in our, in our case, it's 95 pages long. Goodness. So it's a pretty big asset register, but it's yeah. hugely detailed. And when the time comes for you to send out your competitive bids to at least three or more uh, yeah. insurance companies, it's just a matter of pushing the button. This is what you send. Yeah. And so they've all got the same data from you. They've all got very precise information. And they all quote to, from the same standards. Exactly, which is really handy. Yeah. So this is a really useful report. I like this report, but I really wish they would do it as a, a CSV file as well as a PDF. Yes. Uh, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. So how do you get um, a, a CSV file? from the asset register. Well, you go into any item you wish, and then you'll find that when you get into it, there's these three dots here. And when you right click, or sorry, when you click on the three dots, you come up with this mini menu. Yeah. And the data extract takes you to this field, which is, looks very much like a table view, really. But what yeah. it says where is select any layer that you want to choose from you can filter if you wish to dr dr yeah. drill down and then click on run and this fills up with the information that you're looking for oh well i should have put an example in there but it, it yeah. works um, and then you can use that as a spreadsheet okay any questions so far because otherwise we're going to go and play now no that's okay okay all right so um i'm hoping that for this today's exercise phil you've got a smartphone with you um, I will have, yes. Okay. I deliberately left it out in the room because I didn't want it to ring again today. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, what we're going to do now is show you um, 
how you use the phone to take photographs of your assets yeah. and add them to Parish Online. And the beauty of this is, is that when you take the photograph, it will automatically put it into the correct record in Parish Online, which is fantastic. Okay. And what we're going to do is show you how to do that this morning. Right. So uh, to, to show you how you're going to work, you're going to, first of all, create an object in the asset register that you're going to use this morning. So normally you would go out and take a photograph of all your bus shelters or something like that. Yeah. But today I don't want you to go walking out the door. So we're going to put an item into the asset register that you've got close to you, for instance, your desk or a, a waste paper basket or something like that. So we're going to create that in your asset register. So, then we're going to set up geolocation uh, in your okay. system and on your phone. And then we'll ask you to take a picture of the phone, of the asset uh, and you'll see it arrive in the Parish Online account. Okay? okay. So that's what we're going to do. Yep. Um, <clears throat> step one then is to add the asset to the asset register. So in on your computer, you need to be in Parish Online, in the Asset Register, and add something in your room to it. Uh, you might want to call it a test if you don't, if you're not at your sort of official Parish Online, sorry, uh, Parish Council desk or something. But anything in your room, it can be a chair, it can be the waste bin, anything you like. So probably the appropriate layer for it are going to be building contents. audio what about audio sorry i've lost it um have you can you hear me oh yes very well okay so let's go back to uh, the icon so yes you you've gone to you're in your asset register i was i've just come out of it now um okay let's just i'm struggling to minimize our screen in order to bring up my um, you, shouldn't, you, you shouldn't need to do that, uh, Phil. You should be able to, and um, we discussed this yesterday, you should be able to use Alt-Tab to just bounce from one to the other. Alt-Tab. So watch your screen, and as you press the Alt button, and then you can leave the Alt button pressed down, and then just tap the Tab button once. And each time you press the Tab button, you should change to a different screen. Does that now, work? I'm getting this thing about language again. Yeah. Um, Alt tab. Got it. You got it. Yeah. Okay. Good. It's come up uh, right. I said then, good. Yep. Yeah. So you want to select the building contents as uh, the item. Yeah. Got and that. then go uh, add a new record. Um, building contents. Why all I've done is got a tick against building contents. I, it's not dropping down to anything. Oh, okay. So um, let me just, I'll stop sharing my screen and you share yours, Phil, and then we'll be able to see what you're doing. Oops, sorry. Um, so at the bottom of your Zoom screen, are you in Zoom at the moment or are you well, in? I'm in, I'm in Paris Online. Okay, what? so do the old tab and switch over to the other window. And at the bottom of the Zoom screen, there's a green share screen, share screen button. Yep. Got it. You should have it. Uh, not yet. Oh, there's, there we go. Yep, it started. All right. Okay, that's fine. So, oh, I see what's right. Okay, you're not in the right place. If you click on the X there, and go into you go down to the asset register and yep. right click on it 
right click in the building con no sorry i bet yeah. my bet my mistake mistake go back into building content right click there yeah right click good add feature yeah. yeah and away we go so your casual what are you going to take a picture of your desk or something um a light fitting a desk we'll call it. <laughs> we choose whatever you like all right uh, Fe festive lights perfect all right good just give it a name call it phil's test or something yeah good and then the description is your office or whatever yeah i mean this this is just fun perfect and that's yeah. all that's all we need for the moment phil okay um, you just go down to the oh and we need something because of say uh, we haven't got oh we need to put it in your house so on the map right uh, for Zoom the sake in. of argument can you find your house yes Right, that's, that's the crosshairs, and I've clicked. Per perfect. Okay, so now you can click on save. Bottom left. Uh, how do I get the blue dot to stay where it is? Oh, Not just just left click once. There you go. Good. Save. Yep. Yeah. So what that means is now that you have um, a record of that festive light. And I even like the icon. Well done. Yeah. Um, in your house. Right. So what we're going to do now is photograph it and make sure that the photograph shows up in Parish Online. Okay. So to do that, uh, you need to stop sharing your screen for the moment, please. Or no, no, no you can stay as you are. Actually, I'll, I'll switch mine. Um, I need to go back to there. What we're going to do now is set up geolocation uh, on your phone. Okay. And what geolocation is it? Have you used Google Maps on your phone? Um, no, I haven't. Not okay, much. so what this is, is a system that says uh, you're going to be turning on in due course, not, not just yet, you're going to be turning on Parish Online in your phone. Okay. And then, in theory, as you walk around, parish online screen will change to represent where you are okay so in other words the it's using the phone's um built-in location system to yeah. say this is where you are therefore i'll align you with parish online um and then you can start you'll be standing in front of um the appropriate device that you're going to be filming so for instance if you walk out to your bus shelter and take a photograph Yes. The parish online on your phone will show you standing in front of the bus shelter. It, it's a magical system. It's really very clever. It's very clever. <laughs> so what you're going to do now is, is set up your phone so it'll work that way. Yes. And then um, uh, we're actually going to go do the exercise and take a photograph. Okay. So whilst you're in parish online. Yes. Down on the bottom uh, line of the the screen there are three vertical dots in the bottom line bottom row so just next door to the left hand column just to the right of the left hand column yeah, geolocation yep so make sure the geolocation is on yeah and That's then you should be asked if parish online can use your location click allow uh where do i get that question when you oh, yes i've got it allow okay, good yep so allow yeah and then you can toggle the crosshair item in the middle of the screen just so it becomes filled with color. And all that means is that the map will now follow the blue dot on your on your phone. It does, it's irrelevant for today. I'm just putting it in here as something okay. to do when, when you're doing this for real. Yeah. Okay. So now we can switch to your, your phone. Yes. And you need to browse to your Parish Online page. And that has a browser address of, tell me when you're ready to go. Um, go into your phone, go into your browser. Yes. And I'm type pretty... in the address parish online, all one word, dot xmap dot cloud slash login. 
and it'll bring up the familiar screen that you're used to. Dot cloud dot uh, cloud slash login. I've got parish online dot xmap dot cloud. Was it forward slash? Yes, and then the word login. And then enter on that. Xmap Cloud GIS login username. So that's my your usual usual name, whatever you normally use to log in with. Yeah. And I hope you can remember your password. Yes. Good. And um, it's Password is Um, it's a pain in the neck to do the first time but once you've done it once it's, it then does it for you automatically in future yeah but the first time is a real pain because the screen's too small and the fingers are too clumsy and you always get the password wrong what it's in, I don't know why it won't uh, log in, accept it. Oh, I know, it's come up with a capital when it shouldn't have done. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> As I said, it's a pain the first time, but it's worth it because once you get going. Um, admin at three, two. Well, that's interesting because I've double checked it and everything is right. Log in again. And it's saying incorrect username or password. So it should be admin at something like, I know, 29.u69 or whatever it is. Uh, yeah, so admin at 32UG006. Password, I'm reading exactly right. I'll just check that, that again. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, make sure that the there's no space at the end of the password or at the beginning. Um, no, there isn't. Okay, because that's usually where it detects an, an error. Ah! Sneaky, sneaky. There's a at. I think I've spotted it. It was a bracket that shouldn't have been there. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> no spaces. It's a capital. It's a hash. So I really am getting. Ah, we're in. We're in. Hey, you're well on. Good stuff. This took some time. Yes. Now you, you're going to have to wait a minute or two, Phil, for the GPS to lock itself in because it doesn't automatically come up at your house. So although the phone's at your house, it may not yet show it. It says, yeah, XMAP Cloud wants to use your device's location. Allow. Yes, please. Absolutely. Allow Chrome to access its device's location. Yes. 
and it's there. Brilliant. All right, so... And it, it's on my address as well. <laughs> even better. Yeah. So now the thing to do, Phil, is um, you to select the item from the asset register on your phone. So there right. is a menu, there's a menu button in the phone down at the bottom that lets you turn on the uh, building contents layer in the asset register. So is that the layers one, the one on the left? Yes. Um, yes, and Good. I've got parish layers. Excellent. Well, you asset want to, register. Asset register, yep. Turn that one on. Yeah. And select building contents. Yeah. And find the icon for your, the, the blue dot we put on your house, which is the festive light icon, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not getting that. Let's try building contents again. I've got the little cog wheel. Asset register building contents location can be anywhere within the building outline on the map where it's normally situated. Right. But I still have the menu, but it's not overlaying the map. Ah, uh, you may find you need to slide uh, your finger up because the underlying overlay is in the way. So you can... Okay. It's just a matter of um, usually putting your finger down at the bottom and sliding up. No, I've lost everything now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. Wait, what sort of phone have you got? It's a Samsung Android. Okay, well, that's what I've got. Well, it's close. How am I going to get that back then? Um, if you tap on the you got a, a button that yeah, says previous screen. Yeah. Yeah, I've, uh, well, I've, I've got it back, but I'm okay, back so, to... Let's... So what, oh, it's on the screen at the moment, uh, Phil. Um, just the map now. I'll go back to the layers again. Yeah. And I go to... The asset register. Asset register, building contents. Right, and then That's when you... Building. Stop, yeah. stop, stop, stop. So yeah. when you're in the building contents there, does the map change to your house or show your house? Does Is there an icon showing up on the map? No, because I've got the building contents menu and a yes. very narrow strip of map on the right-hand side of my screen. Oh, right. So can you scroll left so that it shows your house? No, it's not closing down the menu. And I can't do anything with the map. I've got a grey box in the bar at the top now. I don't know whether that does that switch to the map. Um, yes. Let me just. I've got the map. Out. Okay, got good. Map. Yeah. So, is there now a festive light icon? There is with a black dot on top of it. Perfect. So just click on that. Am I doing that on my? Telephone or on the... on the... On your phone, yep. Yeah. No. So you should be able to click on the icon of the festive light. I'll blow it up. Yes. Good. And then you get the uh, chance to add an attachment. Now I've just got... I've blown up the map. got my house. got the festive light. It's got a circle around it with this black, black dot in the middle. Right. Um, um, let me just, there is a way of turning off that black dot. Let me just see what we do there. You've got uh, down the bottom of your screen, there's a follow button. Um, yep. If you turn that off, then that removes the black dot so you can actually get at the icon. How do I do that? Um, uh, there's a geolocation with a tick in it. I want that to stay on, don't I? Uh, not any longer, no. You can turn um, that off. Okay, let's go back. That's it, it's turned it off. As soon as Good. I put yeah. So now, can you double click on that uh, on the festive lights icon? Yep. And it brings up your record. 
No, no it, it hasn't done. Well, it may be a matter of changing the screen again. Remember that grey box you clicked on the top before? Yeah, let's just have a look. Now I'm back to the high res map, the colour version. Um, but no house. Uh, the house is there on the map, yes. But you're and not so, in the, so are the you're lights. Not, you're not in the asset register. Uh, no, there's no. Uh, oh, let's try the layers. Building contents. Yes, I've got that. I've okay. Got next layer. Parish building contents. Good. And uh, what we need to do is to click on the festive lights icon so that the record opens up on your screen. Right. Just not happening. No, it's, it's a matter of finding your way around the the screen and. It's like, double click on the festive lights. Just tap on it. Yeah. It says type in, type to search address base. Do I need to do that? No. Uh, can you hold your phone up to the script, the camera just so I can see where it... No, it's, it's not sufficiently clear. Is that any better? Uh, I think that, yes. Um, I think what we need to do is to bring up the record of the data register the asset register for your festive lights and i suspect it's sitting as a separate screen we just need to somehow shift the screen you've got and just, bring up the just slide them across. Across. no it's uh, the only other screen i've got is this blank one which is presumably is the cap camera Oh, yes, yes, that's not the one we're looking for, but I, I agree. Well, I'll, I'll, Phil, I'll practice this myself on my phone so I can go through it with you this afternoon. But basically, once you've clicked on the, the, the festive lights icon, it'll bring yeah. up the record um, of the, the festive light, the one you created. Yeah. You just click on add attachments. And then it says, what do you want to add? And you say photo. And then you take a photograph of the asset and it adds it to the record. And then okay. what we do is have you come back to your desktop. And when you look at the same record, you'll discover it's got a photograph in it. Yeah. Um, I need to set my phone up so I can imitate what you're doing and see if we can find out why you can't find that screen. But On my laptop screen, the black dot is still there. Yes, because you've made the change on your phone, not on your desktop. Okay. That's all right. Um, but and let me just see if I can bring it up now, but I have my doubts I'll be able to. Let me just try it. I'm afraid I've got a new phone, so I'm just getting the hang of it. Let's go into it now. Bear with me a second. Oh, I can't spell, that's the problem. Hmm. My festive lights appears to have moved as well. <laughs> Okay, I'm, the next uh, I'm just logging in myself. Bear with me a second. Uh, I need to just see. I can never remember what my... Um, login name is, bear with me a second. I think 
it's 40 UD. I'm just going through the same steps, same steps that you've been through, Phil. Yeah. Uh, come on, girls. Let's turn on geolocation. Thank you. Good. Right. Right, here we go. So I'm now going to focus in on my house. Perfect. And what register have I got in my house? So now I'm just going to bring up my layers and see if we have the same issue that you had. So I've turned on the. Yeah, well, I've just lost, just completely lost it now. What, the whole thing? Yeah, I've lost, on my phone, I've lost everything. So let's just. Okay, here we go. Right, I've just got back to Parish Online. Right. In the village. Right. So the next step. Ah, you idiot. Okay. <laughs> um, I've seen entirely what my problem is. I've forgotten that I've moved house. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm trying to search my phone or for a house that I'm no longer in. Very strange. There we go. Right. 
Turn off the map. From my map page to the asset register, you clicked yes. on the, the three vertical dots, those Luminia. Yes. And it asks you which layers do you want. Well, no, I've just got geolocation with a tick against it. That's all I've got down there. Okay. But I'm just doing exactly the same thing myself. So give me a second because I'll be with you. Got it. Um, layers, asset register. You got it. Well done. Buildings contents. So just tell me how you found that. Um, that little stack of layers in the bottom left hand corner. Right. Perfect. Yeah. But what's come up now is that I've got to buildings contents with the cog wheel. Yes. Asset registry of building contents location will be anywhere within the building outline on the map where it's normally stuck, situated. Right, so what you uh, you need to turn on the layer for building contents, and it should show yeah. you your festive light icon. Um, how do I turn that layer on? Uh, I've clicked on building contents, and I've got a cogwheel, but that's all I've got. You've got a cogwheel. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I didn't see that. Can you hold that up again, please, Phil? Big, big close. Yeah. Uh, let's see if I can get rid of the sun. No, I can't see that. Sorry. Um, it's a glare back off the screen, I think. No, bear with me whilst I just do exactly the same thing at my end. Um, so now I'm on my house, right? Uh, you yeah. see, push the tablets, and where do we get the layers up? Okay, no, that's not a layer, is it? So I need to go there. No. Uh, just press the three dots on the top. Copy link, view collections, recent. Now that's your browser menu, I think, isn't it? It, it is, powered by yes, Chrome. No, you, that, you, that's no good to you. No. You need to be working on the layers. I'm, I'm not getting it. What is the issue there? No, that's not it either. Ah, well, that just learn this collection. Click right to toggle layers. Ah, where do you see them? Um, I've just clicked on the asset register again, and... But how do you get the asset register in the first place? Oh, I, you're on your desktop now, or on your phone? No, I'm on my phone, asset register. I clicked, uh, I clicked on it, and I've got a circle around the downward arrow. On my phone. Yes, that's uh, selecting the layers in the asset register. So what I've not managed to do yet is get into the asset register itself yet. Uh, right. Uh, there must be a way. That, and I did it on yes, my asset register. Asset register dropped down to buildings contents. It's got a tick against it. Perfect. And now if you look at your house in the screen, you should see the festive lights icon. Uh, is this on... Um... On my telephone or on the screen on the laptop? No, on the phone. On yes, the phone. I can't get between the two. This ah, my yes, okay. is now taken up with the asset register um, menus. So can you tell me how you got into the asset register, Phil? Um, I went down to the bottom right-hand corner, I think, on the three buttons. Right, now I only get geolocation. When I do that, yes, and then when I switch that off, up came the menu. There's a cross above geolocation, you've got a tick on it, yes, and then I oh, right. okay, I'm with you, yes, all right. So now we got no, that's not the right one. 
geolocation, yes, is we, we turned it off. So now you're saying if you, oh dear. No, I didn't turn it off. I left the tick and just closed the box. You just closed the box? Yeah, I had geolocation appeared as a word and a, yes. and a tick appeared. Yes. And then above that, there's a usual top right hand corner cross. Yes. So I took that off my screen and then up came the, the layers. Oh, that's what I'm not seeing. It hasn't come up with the layers. And, and this is where it's a matter of finding the screen somehow changed. Okay, uh, you're, you're getting the layers and I'm not. How irritating. And I just need to see. Well, the same way that your layers showed up, you should be able to select the um, building contents layer and then go back to your map, which is just another slide on the screen. I can't do it on mine. It's really right. It's got difficult, to, difficult for me to explain to you how to do it if I can't do it on my own screen. <laughs> I held my finger down on building contents and I get a sub menu that came up with that feature. Yeah, well, I'm not getting. When, when you click on the X above geolocation, you yeah. then got a different choice, and I didn't, and I don't. Um, I got, it, it's a matter of selecting the layers somehow. I do remember that, but. Oh, there we go. I beg your pardon. All right. So it's just, as you say, it was just a matter of getting it right. So going to building content. It's telling me to right click on my phone, but I can't right click on my phone. No, I, I'm, I'm now where you were. Let me just see if I can get out of there. I need to be in the building contents. Yes, I've got that. And it's turned on. And therefore, I should see. I have a sub menu, add feature, table view. Well, you've already got the feature there. What you want to do is to is be able to select the feature. Yeah, which I can't because my screen is taken up by the menu. Yep, I, I understand that. I'm just trying to see how to work around that. Have you got a grey box in the top right hand corner? Not yet. I have I have lost the asset. Sorry, the menu. Oh, damn it, the layers. There we go, layers. So parish layers, asset register, building contents yeah. now on. And then as you say, the issue is going back to the map from there. Okay, if you, you've got your um, building contents layer turned on. Yes, I have. And it, quite, it, feel, feel, it fills half the screen, right? No, it fills nearly all of it. Okay, well, if you can manage to get your finger onto the underlying map, just on the right-hand side, and tap yes. it once. Tap, tap it, it once. once. And then it should come back to you get the map with the asset register actually turned on and showing. No. I've somehow managed to get a tick against sports equipment and against grip bins and against defibrillators. Right, so that's... I want them off. But not your desk. No. Um, but when you're doing defibrillators, where are they based? They're based around the village, but I'm just talking about on the menu. These additional ticks have come on apart from building contents. Oh, I see. Well, um, if I want to switch the tick on grip bins off, I just tap grip bins, don't I? Or do yes. I Okay, that's taken that one off. That's got rid. Okay, so now I'm back to just building contents. And if I hold my finger down on building contents, I get um, asset registry of building contents, location, be anywhere within the building, add a feature, table view, or go to extent. Right, because you're in a mini menu, but you don't want to be in the mini menu. You want, okay. You've already added the feature, so yeah. you want to be back on your map. So 
if you look at the list of layers and you've got building contents is is now ticked on so you should have a little cogwheel there yes right so ignore that now leave that column alone just tap on the map to the right of it mine's all gone gray oh my um My map has got a very, very thin strip of something that looks like green, and then it's got a greyed out map, a less than a centimetre wide. And it's not responding to any kind of tapping. Uh, it's not responding to tapping. No. I'm just playing with minefield so I can see if you get to the right place, what you then do with it. Now I'm getting there off the screen now. Now made that worse. Yeah, I'm just bear with me because I, I, I'm so close, but I don't quite see what the issue is. Ah, I have the map has reappeared, but it's in green. So I'm on the wrong. You're on the wrong layer, maybe. Yeah. Or the wrong part of the map. I'm in the wrong layer. Uh, so I go back to the top. The one I want on is not surface height model. It's premium stack standard, isn't it? Yes. That's the only one I've got on. And then parish layers, parish layers, building contents. It's got a tick on it. The only choices I've got, I've got a little sub menu which has come up with um, the amount of color up to 100 and then go to extent. Uh, you, I am yes. back to. So you're in the. Uh, not the choice of menu that you want. You, you. I've got building contents ticked, but that's it. And if you look yes. to where my, I'm waving my finger, that little narrow strip is all I've got of the map. Right, I see that, which is yeah. weird, isn't it? So, if you yes. are you able to tap on that narrow strip? Yes. With one finger. Yeah. And then does it change to the map? No, it's still the same. If anything's got worse, isn't it? I'm just. It's this little menu down the bottom in the white box, which has got the slide for yep. the color. And underneath it, there's a symbol of uh, like four corners and a circle yes. in the middle. So that's the, that's the equivalent of having right clicked on the layer. Okay. Uh, and you don't want that. But I'm trying to get yeah. back to how you go from, because I can get that as well. I get it up as copy features and bookmarks but if i tap back on building contents i just get a description in a black box oh okay i know i'm here at last golly that took a long time right add an attachment allow take a photo yay yes now my building contents has now got a yes. cog by it rather than a tick that's fine that's good that means it's it's it, it's just that you're um it, it's a question now of getting back to the map isn't it you've got you've got yes. the layer turned on properly yes uh, we need to find the icon that shows your festive lights on your house and right building contents has now gone to a tick even better well done so 
is there a way of what you need to do is to shrink that layer column and show the map underneath? Yes, that's what I want to do. Now I'm just going to write down how I've got to where I've got, because I've succeeded, I've, I've got mine done. So now I need to just re go through it slowly to show you what I've done. Um, and the issue for you is getting rid of the column and getting to the map underneath. Yes. And if you... On the, on the top bar gram, I've got finding page, an arrow up and an arrow, arrow down. I'll tell you what, at the bottom where it says, um, can you see, oh, you can't see it, damnation. When I'm on the map, there's a pile of papers in the bottom left corner, and if you tap on it, yeah. the, the column of, appears with the record in it, which is good. But then to make it disappear, I tip on the map again. But you don't have any map to sort. You're saying your column goes half across the full screen. Yes. Is there a way of reducing it? Can you bring your draw your fingers together and reduce that? Um, no, it won't let me. Neither would it let me drag in the right hand side of the box. Uh, well, okay, <clears throat> I'm I'm now getting the stage where you got where I've got the column filling the whole page. Yeah. And if I squeeze my fingers together, it shrinks it so it comes back to half the page. All right. And if you do that, if you squeeze your fingers, does it shrink I'm it down? Still, uh... Because I imagine you're used to, to expanding and decreasing pictures by yes, waving your yeah, fingers at them. It's not, it's certainly not doing this. I think what happens occasionally with Parish Online, remember how on the main screen we do a complete refresh, a recycle? Yes. Great. So I wonder whether your, your phone's in the same state and you may need to sort of start afresh. Right. Um... Um, because I'm now so happy that I've done this, but I need to be sure I know, uh -huh. how I, I write it down how I did it. Well, I've now got a full screen of map, but it's a green map. A green map. I, I, so, know, I, um, I now need to go to the layers and the map I want whoa, to... You, when you're on the green map, do you recognise where you are? Yes. And it is your house, is it? Yes. So then the question is, why is it green? Now it's gone again. <laughs> Can you um let's go back here? Yeah, well, I would suggest yeah, I've got the menus. I would suggest you close down I've got, close down your browser and start afresh. Okay. Um so come out of your browser and then go back into it. And when you type in parishonline.xmat.cloud, it should right, be. So I'll, I'll shut everything down. Yep. And then go back into the browser. Yep. And then, and then when you type in, start typing in Parish Online, it should fill it out for you with the slash login bit. No, it's not. No, so you've got, um, if you type in Parish Online dot dot cloud slash login. Yeah, Parish Online login. Mm, okay, try it. See what it does with that. Doesn't sound quite right to me, but never mind. I've got to the main page with the asking for login details. Okay. Can you do that? Yeah. I just want to make a note for future reference of what I did. Great care this time. Okay, I'm just having to take my time because. I put the details in, don't log in. Right. And nothing appears to be happening. 
It's not even rejecting the details I put in. Uh, how's your phone signal there? Good, nice and strong? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, it's working. Uh, no. Yes, that's fine. Right, so it's taking me back to the front page again. I've got my username in, the password in, and I've hit login, and nothing's happening. Um, the, usually what I find is that, that just the phone being bloody, bloody minded for a bit. Yeah. yeah. So you've tapped on the login and nothing's happened. No. Nope. Um, if you go to something else in your phone, is that working reasonably? You know, as it usually does. Um, you have a sort of a page for your bank account or your credit card or something. Yeah, that's just trying. I'll do some of some that messages. Messages are working. Right. Uh, that's, so if you go back now to the login page. Yeah. And you tap the login again. It went light grey, but that's all it's done. At the top right hand corner against the word login, it's got release notes. Wow, is that usual? No, I can't, can't say I've noticed it before, but it's the Parish Online title page. I think we need to um, again shut down your browser and come back to that page. I'm, I'm a, a slightly puzzled by why you've got that registered notes thing. Okay. Okay. No. Log on. Nothing. I'm conscious that I'm taking a lot of your time here. Well, as it, as it happens, um, Phil, I, I need to, I've got to go in about 10 minutes because yes. I've got another appointment, but I'm happy to try and fix this with you. Um, it's, what happens? I've, I've just gone on my browser and I've got two options that have come up. Parish Online Login, which we tried and it didn't work. And the Parish Online Digital Mapping Software for Town Community and et cetera. And then other searches people use were XMAP login, parish online training, etc. So should I try the XMAP login? Well, the, the correct address should yeah. be parishonline.xmap.cloud slash login. So if any one of those previous choices takes you to that page, that's fine. But if you aren't on that page, that's why we're having the problem. So right. if you can make sure that the browser address is parishonline.xmap.cloud slash login, that's where you need to be. Right, let's just clear that. Up. That's parish online dot xmap. Sorry, what came after? Uh, dot cloud. 
.cloud slash login. Hash online dot xmap dot cloud forward slash login. login. Correct. Okay, we're there. And is that taking you in? Or um, rather, did it ask you to get in your. No, no, goodness me, it's taking me to DWP payments. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <clears throat> um, I, well, I can look at previous searches. I have a hint for you, uh, Bill. Yeah. On your desktop, if you go to um, the knowledge base, yes, which is uh, cogwheel, top right, drop down, help and support. Yeah. Then in the search box, type in the word geolocation. Um. Right, I've clicked on the cog. Is that admin? Help and support. No, help and support. Yeah, help and support. Yeah. Then there's a search box. You in the search box, type the word geolocation. And it should come up with a link for you. It says search community geolocation. Yeah. And then when you get there, there's a, a video which is no more than say four or five minutes long, yeah. but it's yeah. well worth watching. Yeah, it says mobile usage. Yes. So and that I, I just mentioned that to you because A, it's fun to watch, B, it yeah. gives you some more instructions, and C, I'm awfully afraid that he uses an iPhone, so it doesn't work in quite the same way as an Android. No. And I've just done it on the Android here. I'm going to make uh, when I have some time, I'm going to make notes and how to do. And I'll send you the notes. Okay, thank you. But at the moment, you're having trouble even getting back into Parish Online on your phone. So, yeah. Um, always in these cases, I just turn the phone off and reboot it and start again. <laughs> yeah, I think I might do that and have another okay. game. Uh, Phil, I'm going to have to sort of say goodbye okay. for the moment. Yeah. Um, but I'll come back with you this afternoon. Okay, I'll see you at three. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Take Bye. care.